This video is about the structure and properties of ionic compounds. Now you only need to know about the structure of one in particular, um, which is sodium chloride, or Na for sodium and Cl for chlorine, which when bonded together makes sodium chloride. But in general, the structure of ionic compounds are similar in that they have a lattice structure. And all we mean by lattice structure is that there is a regular repeat of three dimensional arrangements of atoms or ions in this case. And the reason why it's lattice structure is because we have to remember that the bonds in an ionic compound are between charged particles. So you have the Na plus and the Cl minus, and it is the opposite charges that mean they are attracted together. And rather than just being one sodium ion bonding to one chlorine ion, because they're charged, you end up with these giant lattice structures of positive and negatively charged ions all attracting each other in all directions, forming this regular arrangement lattice structure. So if we were to, to define the structure itself, we'd say it's a lattice structure, that there's a regular arrangement of ions, and that's why it's a lattice, that it's a giant structure because you don't just have one or two atoms bonding together, you would have millions of atoms bonding together in these lattices. And this also makes it a crystalline structure as well. So inside um, this lattice of sodium chloride here, if we were to try and draw it in 3D as charges, you'd have for example an Na plus bonding to a Cl minus and then if we were to try and draw it in a 3D shape like we're representing here you would then have an Na plus here and Cl minus going backwards you would have an Na, pl Na plus here and a Cl minus and an Na plus and a Cl minus and going back along here you'd have a Cl minus and then that would be the Na plus from there. So you can see it makes this giant 3D structure of oppo oppositely charged ions with the positive sodiums, the negative chlorines, and this is what this diagram is showing here. So we could have the green ones representing the sodium, for example, and the purple ones representing the chlorine, and there would be this giant lattice of oppositely charged ions acting together. So within those, if you remember, the force which is holding these ions together is called electrostatic force. And in a giant ionic compound, you would have electrostatic forces acting in all directions. So that is part of our structure. It's lattice. It's got a regular arrangement of ions, which are these Na and Cl ions. It's got a giant structure. It's crystalline. And the important thing is that there are electrostatic forces acting in all directions. Okay, and this means that there are very strong bonds between the ions, um, keeping them together in that lattice structure. And as for the properties of ionic compounds,
Well, because of these electrostatic forces acting in all directions, it means it's very difficult to break the ionic bonds apart. You need a lot of energy inputted in to break these bonds apart. And if you need a lot of energy in to break the bonds, it, it means it's got a high melting and boiling point. because you need a lot of energy put in to make this solid structure a liquid and then a gas. So at the moment it's solid. You'd have to input a lot of energy to break those ionic bonds because of the electrostatic forces holding them together to make it into a liquid. And furthermore, you would need even more energy, therefore a really high boiling point, to turn it into a gas with the gas particles travelling in all directions randomly with loads of energy. So a high melting and boiling point for these ionic compounds. Next, most of them are solid at room temperature. And that goes hand in hand with the fact that they have a high melting and boiling point because at room temperature it's not hot enough for the ionic compound to reach its melting point so it will stay a solid, it won't be able to melt into a liquid and therefore won't reach its boiling point either. The third property which you need to know about for ionic compounds is the idea that when molten they can conduct electricity. So they can't do so when they're solid because when they're solid the ions are in a fixed arrangement within this lattice structure but when they are molten so when they can flow when they're a liquid then they can conduct electricity because current is the flow of charge and if you remember with ionic compounds they consist of ions which are these charged particles and when they are molten, these ions are free to flow. So that's why they can conduct electricity. So rather than being in the lattice structure, if these Na plus and Cl minus ions were free to flow, that means that they could um, pass a current through the molten ionic compound. So the final thing is that they can conduct electricity when molten. And if you remember for electricity you need a flow of charge, you'll also be able to remember that um, in an ionic compound you have ions which are charged. So when they are allowed to flow then you can conduct electricity but you can't do so um, when it is a solid. I just finally like to mention a final property that might be discussed in relation to ionic compounds and that is the idea that they are brittle. This means if they're hit they will shatter as opposed to bend and be able to be reshaped and this is all to do with the ions that form their structure and I'll show this just up here in 2D form. If you had um, a structure way whereby you had your sodium and your chlorine bonded together in the lattice structure so you'd have another chlorine here and another sodium here for example. If you were to hit this top layer of the ionic compound you would cause the ions to shift to the right and in this situation you would have the sodium and the chlorine on the top row shifting along one place to the right and if you do this what you would have is a situation where you'd have ions with the same charge suddenly next to each other so you'd have the Na plus and the Na plus and the Cl minus and the Cl minus now next to each other so you've distorted the arrangement and the reason why it's brittle 
is because now you've got two positive charges touching each other they will repel and it will break the compound apart so because you have like charges next to each other now this causes a repulsion because like charges repel each other and this means that your ionic compound is also brittle.